after studying this module you would be able to know about different pricing policies understand marginal cost pricing understand price skimming understand price penetration understand peak load pricing and finally understand markup pricing let us first have a brief look at different pricing policies in a textbook fashion normally the pricing policies refer only to marginal pricing that too in the context of competitive markets however managers in practice follow different pricing strategies and the discussion that follows would be considering all these different pricing policies or strategies as practices which are followed by the managers let us first come to marginal cost pricing in economics the marginal principle is very important so when we talk about marginal cost marginal cost is the change in the total cost that arises when the quantity produced or the output increases by one unit therefore there is an additional cost which gets added to the total cost hence it is per unit cost but in a marginal sense that is as there is a increment in the output the additional cost that is incurred on that particular out unit of output is known as marginal cost in general terms the marginal cost at each level of production may include additional costs required for the production of that particular unit and certain uh, kinds of you know costs are included for example if for producing an additional unit there may be more of raw material required there may be more of labor required so the sum total of such expenditures incurred specifically on the one additional unit is known as the marginal cost at each level of production and therefore we have to consider basically the time period that is as as time passes each additional unit uh, is being produced and each additional unit has a specific uh amount of expenditure incurred and this is known as the marginal cost the graph is plotted with price cost and revenue on the y axis and quantity or output on the x axis if goods are being produced infinitely uh, and if we assume that they are divisible then the size of the marginal cost will change in response to every unit as it has been defined but what we find is the marginal cost function is not a linear function as the variable input increases then the marginal cost also increases of course this depends upon the full range of output normally the range which is considered by a producer is that portion of the marginal cost which is upward sloping that is although the marginal cost curve could be u shaped but as far as the producer is concerned 
the relevant portion of the marginal cost curve is the rising portion of the marginal cost curve. So, there would be an increase in the marginal cost as the volume of output increases. In practice, the above definition of marginal cost as the change in the total cost as a result of an increase in output of one unit is inconsistent with the differential definition of marginal cost for uh, virtually all non-linear functions. This is as the definition finds the uh, it should be and it is measured as a tangent to the total cost curve at different points for given levels of output. So, what happens is the marginal cost could be defined as the slope of the total cost curve at different points in time that is at different levels of output. A new definition may be useful for marginal cost using the current definition of change in total cost as a result of an increase in one unit of output. Therefore, we could say that T c within brackets q plus 1 bracket closed minus T c bracket q. So, basically this is the change in total cost with a one unit increase in output as q is the uh, measure of output and redefining marginal cost to be the change in the total cost as a result of an infinitesimal change in the output which is consistent with the economic literature and the advantage is that if we define marginal cost in this manner, it can be calculated as uh, the marginal cost function could be uh, differentiated uh, because it is a continuous function as we say that it would be twice differentiable. So, if we consider the marginal cost curve in this respect, the uh, cost function could be differentiated and the marginal cost is the cost as we have said of the next unit. Therefore, M c which is marginal cost is equal to uh, D c that is change in total cost divided by d q which is change in output. So, uh, such a function can also be expressed in discrete terms. In discrete terms marginal cost would be del c upon del q. Now, let us consider the nature of the marginal cost curve and the marginal revenue curve. Both of these are essential for marginal cost pricing. Under competitive conditions, we know that each additional unit would be sold at the same price which is the market price or is the average revenue. So, under competitive conditions, we know that the marginal revenue would always be equal to the average revenue. The marginal revenue curve is shown as the blue curve which is linear and which is parallel to the x axis because as on the x axis we are measuring quantity or produced or output. As the output goes on increasing by one unit on the y axis we have a fixed amount of the marginal revenue which as we have said would be equal to the average revenue. Therefore, the marginal revenue function under competitive conditions is parallel to the x axis. On the other hand, we have just explained that the marginal cost curve technically is a u shaped cost curve. Therefore, initially the red line which shows the marginal cost curve declines and it continues to decline up to a point where the slope of the marginal cost curve becomes 0. Thereafter, the marginal cost starts to rise and we can see 
that the slope of the marginal cost curve is constantly rising. Now, the marginal cost curve starts from below the marginal revenue curve and because it starts rising therefore there has to be a point at which the marginal cost curve intersects the marginal revenue curve which is horizontal which is parallel to the x axis. Now at this point what do we see? We see that the marginal cost is exactly equal to the marginal revenue. To the left of this point where the output would be given let us call it Q. To the left of this point you would notice that the marginal revenue the blue curve is lying above the marginal cost curve. Therefore, as we increase the quantity produced the marginal cost would rise but still as long as the marginal cost remains below the marginal revenue there is a producer surplus the difference between the marginal revenue and the marginal cost that is on each unit the producer is uh, getting a surplus of revenue over cost. Now let us consider the marginal cost curve to the right of the point where MC is equal to MR. Under such conditions that is if the output increases beyond Q which is the point of intersection then the marginal cost would be greater than the marginal revenue as you see that the marginal cost curve rises above the marginal revenue curve. Therefore, the marginal cost that is the additional cost on one unit is greater than the marginal revenue. It may be that at one point of time for some reason a producer might have produced a level of output where marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. But as the producer learns that each additional unit of output is giving him a loss because marginal cost is based on marginal revenue he would tend to reduce the level of production and come back to Q which is the equilibrium level where marginal cost is exactly equal to marginal revenue. Similarly, if the output is less than the point where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue then the output has to be increased because for every unit being produced there is a surplus which the producer can take advantage of and hence there could be only one equilibrium level of output where the producer's surplus is maximized. Now let us consider price skimming. Price skimming is a pricing strategy in which the marketers sets a relatively high price for the product or the service at first and then lowers the price over a period of time. It is a temporal version of price discrimination and it also yields better results. It allows the firm to recover its sunk costs quickly before competition steps in and lowers the market price. So therefore initially when competition has not set in it is a good idea to skim the market for the possibility of people paying a higher price. Price skimming is sometimes referred to as riding down the demand curve. The objective of price skimming strategy is to capture the consumer surplus early in the product life cycle in order to exploit the monopolistic position or the lower price sensitivity of innovators. Price skimming is a product pricing strategy by which the firm charges the highest initial price to the consumer and this would be 
the price which the consumer would initially be prepared to pay. So, this is also about the consumer's willingness to pay. As the demand of the first consumer is satisfied, then the firm lowers the price to attract another and furthermore, the, as the uh, price becomes more sensitive and the price goes lower down, then slowly the willingness of the consumer to pay a higher price goes down. Therefore, the strategy is gets its name from skimming successive layers of cream as though it were on top of boiling milk. Customer each layer is like a consumer segment of the market and over a period of time when uh, the producer expects that the prices would keep going lower and lower, this is a good strategy. But what are the limitations? There are several potential problems with this strategy. It is effective only when the firm is facing an inelastic demand curve. If the long run demand schedule is elastic and if the market equilibrium is achieved by the quantity changed rather than price change which is happening in the case of perfect competition, then penetration pricing is more suitable in that such a case. Price change by any one firm will be matched by the other firms resulting in a rapid growth of the industry volume. Therefore, this is more like quantity competition rather than price competition. The dominant market share will typically be obtained by a low cost producer that pursues a penetration strategy. A price skimming must be careful with the law. Price discrimination is illegal in certain situations, but yield management is not illegal. Price skimming can be considered either in the form of price discrimination or in the form of yield management. Price discrimination uses market characteristics such as price elasticity to adjust the prices whereas yield management uses product characteristics. Marketeers see this legal distinction as quaint since Almost all cases market characteristics correlate highly with the product characteristics. If using a skimming strategy, a marketeer must speak and think in terms of product characteristics to stay on the right side of law. The inventory uh, turn rate, the turnover rate can be very low for skimmed products. This could cause the problem for the manufacturer's distribution chain. It may be necessary to give the retailers higher margins to convince them to handle the product enthusiastically. Skimming encourages the entry of competitors when other firms see that the high margins are available in the industry then they will quickly enter if it is a competitive industry. Skimming results in a slow rate of diffusion and adaptation. This results in a high level of untapped demand. This gives the competitors time to either imitate the producer or to leapfrog uh, with the innovation. If competitors do this, then the window of opportunity would have been lost. The manufacturers could develop negative publicity if they lower the price too fast and without significant uh, product changes. Some early purchasers, they will feel that it would have been better to wait and purchase the product at a much lower price. This negative sentiment 
will be transferred to the brand and the company as a whole. The high margins may take uh, a create firm inefficiencies. There would be less incentive to keep costs under control and inefficient practices will uh, become established making it difficult to compete on value and price. Let us now consider a set of diagrams in which we try to imagine how price skimming takes place. The initial market is limited and it is a novelty product. So, the price is given on the y axis in dollars and the price is P1. The demand curve is pretty high at T1 and the quantity demanded is Q1. So, it means that the consumers are prepared to pay a higher price P1. Now, in the next diagram, we see a cascading effect that as the demand curve goes down, then the price goes down to P2 and the quantity goes up to Q2. Similarly, there would be a downward slide or a shift in the successive demand curves from T1 to T2 to T3 and the quantity demanded would increase from Q1 to Q2 to Q3. Hence, if we were to plot all these points that is the combinations of price and uh, quantity, then we would get another demand curve which is given as the black line which intersects the shorter demand curves given in red that is demand curve T1, T2 and T3 and therefore the actual prices which would prevail in the market would be P1, P2 and P3 and correspondingly the quantity demanded would be Q1, Q2 and Q3. So, at each stage we could see that the consumer surplus given in blue which is the uh, difference in price P1 uh, minus P2 multiplied by the number of units. So, this much consumer surplus is being tapped by the producer through this price skimming policy and successively at each stage the uh, consumer surplus would be tapped by the producer. So, therefore, this uh, price skimming policy has been used by certain you know uh, uh, firms, certain marketeers and it is mostly in the technological market as firms set higher prices during the initial stages of the product life cycle that is electronics goods for example, LED TVs and so on. So, the top segment of the market is willing to pay the highest price which is skimmed off first. Then the product en enters the maturity price where the price uh, maturity stage where the price goes down. Now, the next segment of the market is skimmed and then further price skimming occurs for example, in luxury cars, consumer electronics and uh, other such consumer durables. So, there is a confounding factor though that there is a typically uh, high price deflation due to continual reduction in the manufacturing cost and the improvements in quality of the product. So, uh, today it is possible to get a laptop for even 10,000 rupees whereas, uh, maybe 5 years or 10 years ago it might have been in the range of almost 
100,000 rupees. So, uh, a, a book market often combines price skimming with product versioning in the following way. A new book is published as a hard bound book version and the price is always very high. But if the book sells well, then the subsequent publications are brought as paperback editions and the price is reduced far lower than the original uh, hardbound version. So, this is because there may be some price sensitive consumers who would be prepared to buy the book because the book is in demand, but they would not be prepared to pay so much as the they would also expect that a hardbound version may be followed by a paperback and the hardbound usually comes uh, and then later on the hardbound version is sold in a parallel market maybe for libraries and so on. So, so there is a stronger preference where there is a stronger preference there the hardbound versions are sold at a higher price and the price skimming uh, continues. So, this is how we see that it is possible for the price skimming strategy to be used in a innovative way when it comes to the pricing of books. Now, let us look at price penetration. Penetration pricing is a pricing strategy where the price of a product is initially set low and then it rapidly increases when the market by word of mouth accepts the product more and more. The strategy works on the expectation that the consumers would switch to the new brand because of the lower price. Penetration pricing is most commonly associated <coughs> with marketing objectives of enlarging market share and exploiting the economies of scale as the market size goes on increasing. The advantages of penetration pricing to the firm it can result in fast diffusion and adoption of the product. This can achieve high market penetration rates very quickly. This can take the competitors by surprise, not giving them enough time to react. It could be based on the marginal cost pricing, but uh, this appears to be a more efficient method. The main disadvantage with penetration pricing is that it establishes long term price expectations for the product and image preconception for the brand and the company. This makes it difficult to eventually raise prices.
Some commentators claim that penetration pricing attracts only the switchers which is known as bargain hunters and they will switch away back once the price rises. There is much controversy over which is better uh, to raise the price gradually over a period of time or to employ a single large price increase. A common solution to this problem is to set the initial price at the long term market price but include an initial discount coupon through some sales promotion technique. In this way, the perceived price remains high even though the actual selling price is low. Sometimes consumers associate a high price with quality and excellence. So, if they find that a product is initially at a very low price, they may not be ever attracted to buy that product. Another potential disadvantage is that the low profit margins may not be sustainable enough and before the cycle is complete, the strategy in a particular case may actually be doomed to failure. Price penetration is highly, the product demand should be highly price elastic, only then it would work. See, these are some of the conditions where price penetration would be appropriate strategy. Substantial economies of scale should be available so as to afford such a pricing strategy. The product should be suitable for mass markets, there should be bulk demand for the product. The product will face stiff competition soon after introduction and if there is not enough demand amongst consumers then to make the price skimming work it may not actually work. In industries where standardization is important there again the, it is possible to have the price penetration strategy. The product that achieves high market penetration often becomes the industry standard. For example, Microsoft Windows. Other products, whatever be their merit, must be marginalized and there, there is a kind of a momentum in favor of the standard products. A variant of price penetration strategy is the bait and hook model which is the so called razor blades business model where the starter product is sold at a very low price but requires a more expensive replacement such as refills which are sold at a higher price. Today if you go to the market virtually the difference between a refill of a ball pen and the, pri the price of a ball pen itself is very low. The <coughs> most universal tactic in desktop printing business is that a desktop printer would sell for as low as even 5000 rupees or 3000 rupees but when you go for getting the replacement cartridges then the cartridges would be costing something like 1500 or 1200 rupees. Thus the company makes more money when the cartridges are sold rather than when the printer itself is sold. Taking the extreme case penetration pricing is known as predatory pricing when the firm initially sells the product or service in unsustainably low prices only to eliminate the competition and to establish a monopoly right from the beginning. In most countries predatory pricing is illegal although it can be difficult to differentiate between illegal 
predatory pricing from legal price penetration. Now let us look at peak load pricing. Mostly peak load pricing is a pricing technique applied to public goods which uh, in particular is the case of what is known as the Lindell equilibrium. Instead of different demands for the same public good, we consider the demands for public goods in different periods of the day or periods or months in a year and so on. And then we find the optimal capacity and afterwards the optimal peak load prices are worked out. This is typically the case when pricing is done for a public good like power. Uh, this has particular application in urban transport when the daytime peak period is usually much uh, the volumes of uh, the commuters is much higher than the night time which is off peak load. And by subtracting the marginal cost of the operations from the original demands we find that the marginal benefits of the capacity which must then be vertically aggregated and equated to the marginal cost of the increasing capacity. For example, cell phones using the during peak usage time uh, they use it where at that such a time the rate is much higher than during the off peak time. The higher peak prices also encourage customers with flexible usage to shift their usage from the peak time to the uh, slack time and the advantage to the firm is that the slack time has got excess capacity and sometimes if all the demand is piled on to the peak time then they may have operational problems just as in the case of telecom companies or if you have it in the case of a power grid then in the peak time the power grid may collapse. Uh, with the optimum capacity found the optimum peak load prices are found by adding the marginal cost of operations to the marginal benefits generated in each period and then we arrive at the optimal capacity. It may happen that uh, the optimal capacity is not fully used during the off peak period. In that case the capacity expansion will be totally supported by the peak demanders. Now let us look as at a diagram where you would see that the price of the electricity supply is given on the y axis and then we have a vertical demand functions to illustrate and then we have a slowly rising supply function. So initially when there is capacity then the cost does not increase. So there is a long phase of a flattish marginal cost curve which then as you approach the full capacity then the cost begins to increase. Now at the <coughs> peak load demand which is, which is shown by a demand curve to the right then what happens is that at the peak load there is the pricing would be P which is much higher and then this would discourage people from demanding so much. So that there would be a price reduction towards PDR which is lower. 
So this explains how the pricing of uh, a commodity like electricity can be done with the help of peak load pricing. We have now another pricing strategy called the markup pricing. Markup is the difference between the cost of production of a good and services and its actual selling price. Markup is added onto the total cost incurred by the producer of a good or service in order to cover the cost of doing business and to create profit. The total cost reflects the total amount of both fixed and variable expenses to produce and distribute a product. The markup can be expressed as a fixed amount or as a percentage of the total cost or selling price. Retail markup is commonly calculated as the difference between wholesale price and retail price as a percentage of the wholesale price. The other methods are also used that the profit margin is calculated. Uh, for example, the sale price is 2500, the cost of the product is 2000, so the market markup <coughs> would be 500. Given below is the markup as a percentage of the cost added to the cost to create its new total cost that is known as cost plus pricing. So the cost into within brackets 1 plus market bracket close is equal to the sale price or if we solve for the markup then sale price by cost minus 1 will give you the markup. Assume that the sale price is $1.99 and the cost price is $1.40 then markup is equal to 1.99 divided by 140 minus 1 which turns out to be 42 percent. The markup is therefore uh, essential where the underlying cost is very clearly known and it does not vary very often. So now if we were to work it out in the reverse then the profit margin can be arrived by uh, this formula sale price minus cost price is equal to sale price into profit margin. Therefore, profit margin is equal to sale price minus cost divided by sale price. And therefore, the margin can also be rewritten as 1 minus bracket 1 upon bracket markup plus 1 and bracket closed. So, the <coughs> margin therefore becomes markup within bracket markup plus 1. So in our example the margin is equal to 1 minus bracket 1 upon bracket 1 plus 0 0.42 and this way the margin happens to be 29.5 percent. So the margin on uh, the if we calculate it would turn out to be the same that is if we go by the formula that is the sale price minus cost price divided by the uh, cost price. This again gives you 29.5. The discount pricing is another manifestation of this. Another method of calculating markup is based on the percentage of cost. This method eliminates the two step process given above and incorporates the ability of 
discounting price. For instance, the cost of an item is 75% with 25% markup. So 75, let us say dollars within brackets 1 minus 0 0.25. So this would turn out to be uh, 100. So comparing the two methods, uh, if we look at the method for discounting, then uh, 75 into 1 plus 0.25 uh, would be equal to 93.75 which is sale price with a 25% discount. Now the other way around 93.75 into 1 minus 0.25 would again turn out to be 70.731. The cost was 75 and if it were sold for 70.31 then the markup turns out to be 25% discount. So these examples show how these are some related concepts that is margin and the markup and so on. With these examples we can show the difference between adding a percentage of a number to a number and asking what is the number if the markup has to include more than just the profit as an overhead then it could be included. For example cost into 1.25 is equal to sale price or cost upon 0.75 is equal to sale price depending on in which way we would like to calculate it. The summary, now let us consider what all methods, strategies of pricing, pricing policies in practice have we considered. In economics, marginal costing is the change in the total cost and the most used concept in pricing in economics is the marginal cost pricing. In the case of price scrimming strategy, the, it is a pricing strategy where the producer skims the higher price when there is high demand for a new product. As the demand goes down, the producer goes on reducing the price over a period of time. This way, the price skimming strategy is one where the producer is able to tap the consumer surplus. Then, Apart from this, we have peak load pricing which is used in the case of uh, public goods like electricity and here the basic idea is that uh, at different time in the day like morning or at night depending on the demand for uh, either something, some public good like transport or for electricity the pricing is done accordingly and this helps the firm to adjust the capacity of production. And then one final method that we have considered is the markup method which is a rough and ready method where upon the cost a certain markup is built up and this is what accounts for the profit margin.